run into that. Uh, and we ran into it in St. Lucie and, uh, not in St. Lucie, well, we did run into St. Lucie County, but they have door-to-door -door service. We ran into it in Vero Beach County. And where we ran into a problem with Vero Beach County is when you cross the county line, the transportation can't go across that line. And that's not true. Because if your students have an IEP and you can take the transportation system, the IEP, they are allowed to cross the county line. So now our students are transported from Vero Beach to the main campus, from the main campus back to Vero Beach. And that goes as needed. We sign up ahead of time, they know what we need, and they're able to service us. That was in the grant that was awarded to them from the federal government. So if you have federal government transportation in your counties, and almost all counties do, you have to go back and ask that. You have to request that. And that's very, very important. I'd like to introduce my team members today. With me is Nalani Matau. She is, the, she is our educator in the program. And Shante Snellgrove, who will be t speaking with you in just a few minutes about parent advocacy. When I started at Project Stage, I had to think back. It was in September of 2021. And I was coming from transitioning from uh, Indian River School District. And I thought, this is wonderful. Teaching at college is going to be so different. It's going to be just absolutely fabulous. I came into a program. We had 17 students and two instructors. Both campuses had to be serviced. And I started scratching my head, and I said, how am I going to do this? This is just impossible to give them quality education that they need and begin to train them for jobs. I thought, I've, I've got to do something here. What do you do? So you look around, and you say, well, we can hire somebody. But that's not always feasible, because it may not be in the budget. So we have to move on to something else. And we say, OK, what are we going to do? We decided that you wear many hats in this position. As, as you can see, the hats come on as director. The hat then comes on as advocate. Then you're doing job coaching. And then you wear the combat helmet. And that combat helmet sometimes can be a pretty heavy helmet to wear. But all in all, you know, you've managed to get through all of the disciplines that are involved in these hats. But there's really truly one hat you want to wear. And that's the hat you were hired for. And that's director. So what do you do? You begin to look at how you can add a teacher, split cl uh, classes up, regroup people, and do the very best you can. How do you stop changing hats, though? We all wear these hats. How many of you are directors? You know, uh, if you're not, you know, you're wearing the hat as instructor. You're wearing the hat as disciplinarian. You're wearing the hat as job coach. And it goes on and on. On, and it's really difficult sometimes. So I began thinking there's a way that we can work this program. When you, there, the norm for a director and the norm for a college is not the same as the norm for high school. The first year students you see, you have a lot of differential between the first and second year students. And when you have those first year students, they look at you and they say, well, you know, we can run in the halls. That's not a norm for college. Uh, we can be late for classes. That's not a norm for college. And you think, why aren't they, why don't they know those norms? In high school, the teachers are nurturing. They're caring. They're omnipotent. They know everything. They tell everything. They do everything for the students. In college, that doesn't happen. They have to do for themselves. And it's kind of a rude awakening when you say to them, well, you know, nobody's going to bring your lunch to you. You have to go get your lunch. Or you have to go to the fitness center. Nobody's going to take you to the fitness center or the library or tutoring or anything of that nature. You're on your own here. So you best learn the ways. Parents don't know that. So parents call constantly the director and ask questions. Ask questions about why isn't he getting enough homework. Well, he's getting plenty of homework. He's just not bringing it home. He can't operate his computer. They come to us with very limited computer skills. I'm finding that most of the students that are coming to us have not had keyboarding. And how can you come into a college class and not keyboard? 
So we, we were stressed by that. So we had to go back and start teaching keyboarding again, and we adjusted our program. I think the thing that really, really, for me, was the most difficult thing to comprehend was the fact that parents could call you at all times of the day, all times of the night, and want questions answered. And we don't do that. I'm the director. I don't have to answer your questions all the time. I'm not a teacher who's going to resolve the problems for you. You have to come some some resolution with your student, with your son, daughter, to manage this program. The one question I think that I was three days into the program, three days, and I get a call from a parent. And she says, oh, she says, Miss Pagano, she says, Jonathan does, eats only fish sticks at lunch, okay? So I thought, fish sticks at lunch? I said, oh, that's no problem. I'll go down and ask the food service director. I walked into his office, and he's got all these knives on the back wall. I said, oh, this is kind of an ominous setting here. I walked in, and I said, I have a student who'd like to have fish sticks every day for lunch. He goes, what? you got to be kidding. He said, this is college. We don't do individual cafeteria things like the high schools do. Get used to it. And I thought, oh, man. I thought maybe he'd take out one of those knives and use it on me. You know, <laughs> it was just, he was very stern about it. But those are the questions we get constantly. You know, do we have school next Friday? It's in your calendar. <laughs> look, look at the calendar. And it'll tell you, school or no school. Okay, who do I call when my son or daughter is absent? You don't. You email us. And you don't email us. Your son or daughter emails us. We don't want to hear from you. And I said, this has got to stop. This is absolutely, this is just taking more time out of the program than I would like. And we've all been through this. You can relate to it. It's nerve-wracking when you get a call at 5 o'clock and the parent wants to talk till 6 o'clock. And you think, there's a behavior problem, there's this problem, there's that problem, and it could go on and on and on. The problems we deal with individually. But there are some times when we have to say to parents, when I did a survey among my parents, I noticed that 68% of my parents had never set foot on a college campus other than just for the interview for Project Stage, and that was it. That's huge. How do they learn the norms? They don't know them. They're learning the norms of college through their children, to, through the students. They don't come in and take a class in how to be a parent in college. We don't offer that. You know, and it's difficult. This transition phase, that first year, is extremely difficult. So I thought, okay, this has got to stop. How do you stop something like this? Or how do you curtail this activity? Come on in, please. Uh, how do you curtail this activity? So I thought, there's got to be a better way to do it. So I called Janice, and I asked Janice, said, Janice, I knew, give me some direction. She says, well, you know, the parents do ask a lot of questions, and they do, and rightfully so they can, but they've got to ask the right kind of questions, you know, questions that are relevant to the program. I don't want to have to deal with fish sticks all the time, you know, and that was what I was dealing with. What I did was I thought about some interesting things that we could do in college to maybe curtail this. I thought about a parent conference. I thought about individually calling parents and reading them the norms of college or sending home letters. And I would send home letters all the time, letters with dates, letters with grades, letters with this, letters with that. And I'd still get calls. I'd still get calls. Veterans Day, two students showed up. We're closed. It's Veterans Day. You know, and this is what we go through. And then again, they're on the transportation system. So the transportation system had to take, take them back home. It was extremely difficult and extremely frustrating. So I thought for a minute, I said, there's got to be a better way to manage this. And in management, sometimes you think, well, you can either be too strict or you can either be too loose. I said, but really what I don't want to do is I don't want to manage the parents. And we've all been there and we've all done that. We, we're not managing parents, we're managing students. Students who were told or taught to advocate for themselves. So we work with that, but we can't work with the parents because it inhibits the program sometimes. So I thought, what is the best thing we could possibly do? And at that point, I looked at our program and I asked Shantae to do a 
program for parents where parents would come in and learn the norms of college. And they wanted to see if that would help. And she presented an absolutely fabulous program. She got them to realize that college is a privilege, truly a privilege. And it wasn't difficult, but they were interested in learning about it. And I think we had a, a 92% rate on the parents that attended. So I was very, very delighted with that. And I thought, this is wonderful. Now that we have them captive in this room, let's go through all of the things that we need to to make sure that they know what they're doing in the future for the betterment of the program. I can't tell you how well it's worked out to have a parent advocate. I thought first it was going to be maybe cumbersome, maybe it was going to be the type of thing where we have to be doing a lot of extra work. Our parent advocate has come in and taken over. The parents now call her. The parents email her. The parents don't spend the time with us because now we can spend the time on the program and our students. And that's what's highly important for us, that efficiency factor of spending more time with them so that we can encourage success. And that was our goal. So now we have a parent advocate who's done an absolutely remarkable job with our students. She is the publisher of a magazine, and I'm going to let, let her tell you about that. All right, she has been wonderful to work with. She takes parents' questions. She encourages them to do more with their students. Uh, I'm very, very fortunate to have her on hand. And at this point, I, I'd like you to introduce you to Shante Snellgrove. Oh. Hi, everybody. Um, can, I just, can I talk loud enough? You guys can hear me. I don't need a microphone, do I? I'm, I have a big mouth. Okay. All right, well, um, we, okay, first, first of all, I thought I'd introduce myself. My name is and I am a parent, and this is my daughter, Kaylee. I have two uh, wonderful daughters. My youngest one, Kaylee, um, is taking her first semester at Simon & Jewel at Simon & Jewel Liberty College at our Navy Center. So I also have this connection to her. So I wear many hats, too. I'm a parent. I'm a parent advocate. And I'm also a parent advocate. I, I started when Kaylee was younger because, you know, I, I view this as an effort of other parents being successful. I actually started Informing and empowering and inspiring parents in the nation, and we do it through um, free, free our free online magazine, um, free updates on our program, and that's what we share a lot of that information. And we have been doing this kids' college for quite a while because when my oldest daughter um, taught me about college, because my oldest daughter, when she went to college, I took Kaylee along and did the tour, and it was the first. And then I asked Dr. Jackson what was expected, and so I had to start working. Some of the issues that we were dealing with 